Hello friends, I am back with another video and this is going to be a really interesting one for you guys. At some point in your soap business, bath bomb business career, you will encounter inquiries from potential wholesale clients and that is what this whole video is about. A wholesale customer is basically a customer that wants to buy a lot of your product at a really big discount, typically 50 to 60%. And these types of orders are really beneficial when you're starting out because you get a lot of money at once, which will go a long way in purchasing your supplies and also potentially help you invest in equipment that will help your business scale up. The entire wholesale process can be really daunting and a huge mystery. I know when I first started out, I knew nothing about this. So I know that this type of video would be super helpful for you guys and in this video I talk about how I got my first wholesale client all of the things that I had to figure out once I got that wholesale client and essentially my entire process from the beginning to the end from the initial communications to me actually delivering the product at the very end so if you're curious about how I do that in our business keep watching so for all those who are new here, hello, my name is Jerrica. I am the owner and creator of Quench. That is my soap and bath bomb business. In this channel, I talk all about it, all the behind the scenes magic on how I make the product, how I sell the product, how I run my business as a solopreneur, along with the help of my husband. If that is super interesting to you, please subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back. You guys are awesome. And now without further ado, let's get into it. So I first have to talk about how I even got my first wholesale client. If you've seen the video where I talk about how I scaled my business, you know that at some point I completely rebranded everything. I changed my company name, I changed my packaging. I basically made big changes to my company that really set me up to be able to take on wholesale customers. If you're curious about that video, I'll link it up here. But at that point, I did not have any wholesale clients at all. I was really taking my business seriously, even though sales were super slow, I was actively trying to find ways to make sales and to really make things work. So the first step was rebranding and finding my target customer. The next was finding those customers and that included wholesale customers. So one of the best ways to get sales coming in is to be everywhere and that's exactly what I did. I set up an Etsy, I joined local small business groups, I posted frequently on my social media. I tried to put my business everywhere. And really this is a super smart thing to do because you never really know where the next customer is gonna come from. So as I mentioned, I joined a local Facebook business group. And in that group, I introduced myself and I introduced my business and its name and what we were trying to do. And after posting that, I got a message from another business, but he introduced his company as being all about him and asked me if I was interested in creating a soap for him and his company that included hemp seed oil in it. And at the time, since I was super new and I wasn't really getting a lot of business, I decided to take this challenge on and I agreed. So after the rush of getting that first wholesale customer inquiry, I now had to figure out a whole bunch of stuff so that I can respond to him in a professional way. So basically I had to figure out how much these soaps were gonna cost him, how I was going to ship it out, and how quick I was able to get this order out. <laughs> so once I had all of those things figured out, I was able to build my wholesale price sheet, create a professional email response, and send that off to him. And he is actually still a wholesale customer to this day, so if you're watching this video, we love you guys. Thank you so much for sticking with us this whole time. <laughs> so that was how I got my first wholesale customer. But how in the heck did I figure all this stuff out? And, and what are all the little things you need to know in order to have a successful wholesale customer experience? Don't worry, I'm getting into all of that in the next part of the video right now. So step one is really determining your pricing. And determining pricing is so important because you really want to make sure that you're getting compensated fairly and adequately for all of your time and effort. I mentioned in a previous video that when you're determining the retail price of your products, a good guide is your cost of goods multiplied by four. So for wholesale pricing, typically it's that cost times four divided by two. And this is actually what wholesale customers expect. So when you're getting an inquiry from a wholesale customer, they probably already know at this point how much you're charging your soap and they're expecting that price to be at least half that amount. So with that in mind, you can see how important it is to set your retail prices high enough so that when those wholesale customers come knocking at your door and you're able to cut that price in half, you're still making enough profit in order for it to be worth it. So for example, if your wholesale customer found you on Etsy or stumbled upon your website and they see you charging your soap bars at $4 a bar, they're probably expecting that soap bar to be $2 for them. 
When you build your business knowing that wholesale customers are going to eventually come knocking at your door and you're going to want to service those wholesale customers, be sure that your price is already at a high enough point. Step two, determine what type of products you're going to be able to offer to your wholesale customers. And you shouldn't feel obligated to offer everything that you're currently offering in your website or in your markets to your wholesale customer. Remember that the wholesale customer order is gonna be a bulk order of a certain product. So you wanna be able to offer products that you're able to make consistently and you're able to make a lot of it quickly. Remember, if that wholesale customer is gonna be a repeat customer and they're gonna be ordering that same product again, you wanna make sure that you're able to recreate that same exact product. So for example, in our company, we don't offer candles wholesale because, because we make them at such small batches and we currently don't have the capacity or the equipment to make them at bigger batches, so we just don't offer it. You really wanna be able to look at all of your product offerings and see what your current supplies are and be realistic about what you're able to offer a wholesale customer because what makes you appealing to them is not just your product, but also how quickly you can provide that product and how consistently you're able to do that. Step three is deciding how many items that wholesale customer will have to buy in order for them to qualify for wholesale pricing. So remember I mentioned wholesale customers expect about 50% off. Again, you don't have to do 50% off, but it's usually what they expect. And that's a pretty big discount. That's a huge discount. So you wanna be able to make that wholesale customer order enough of that product so that you're still bringing in a high order ticket number. Remember, this is absolutely up to you, but it's worth it to take the time to sit down and figure out how much you're worth and how big of an order you're willing to take on in order for a 50% discount to be worth it. For me, we started with a minimum of 25 soap bars, which at the time I was selling my soap for $8 a bar online. I still am actually. So I was able to offer the soap bars at $4 a bar for my wholesale customer. So if he were to order 25 of them, that would be $100. And for me, that was worth it. But again, it's totally up to you and you really need to think about how much you're worth. Step four is figuring out how fast you're gonna be able to provide this to your customer because it's also information that your wholesale customer is gonna to wanna to know. And remember, the most important thing is to be realistic. For example, soap takes a month to cure. So unless you're making soap all the time and it's ready for your wholesale customer to buy a whole bunch of it, then you can probably realistically put a week or two weeks because you have that stock available. But if you're starting out small and you're not able to hold that much stock, then you're probably gonna be making these soaps to order when that wholesale order comes in. So at that point, your turnaround time is probably more realistically four weeks to five weeks. It's so important, I must stress how important it is to be realistic about this because you really wanna set the expectations for yourself and also your wholesale customer. If you force yourself to deliver things in a time frame that's too fast, you're gonna stress yourself out and you're gonna open yourself up to the possibility of disappointing your wholesale customer. So don't do it, give yourself a realistic timeline and, and set realistic expectations. Step four is to take all of that information and then build your wholesale price sheet. This can be as fancy or as simple as you want. I started with an Excel spreadsheet and I actually still use an Excel spreadsheet to this day. Some people like to put all of their products into a catalog. For me, I change things all the time, so that's not necessarily realistic for me to do. And I found that the wholesale customers that approach me have had no issues with me presenting to them an Excel spreadsheet that I've exported as a PDF. Honestly, the simpler the better when you're a solo printer like me. So on that wholesale price sheet, you're gonna put your product selection, a description possibly of each product, how much the wholesale customer is going to have to buy in order to qualify for wholesale pricing, the wholesale price, and also how quickly you're gonna be able to deliver that item. Because remember, depending on the item, it might be different. Like I mentioned, soap might be four weeks, bath bombs might be two weeks, and if you're able to have that flexibility, put that in there. Step five, you're gonna have to decide how you're going to get paid. <laughs> I give my wholesale customers a couple of options, one being e-transfer and the other being PayPal. PayPal is really great because in PayPal you can actually build out invoices and everyone's familiar with PayPal so most customers are really comfortable with that platform and they like it. It's quick, simple and easy and you can send these invoices to their emails and they can easily pay it and you can keep track of everything that way. E-transfer is 
requires a little bit more maintenance and upkeep and remembering here and there. But I have noticed with e-transfer, there are no fees, whereas PayPal, the bigger the order, the bigger the fee. <laughs> so there's pros and cons to everything. I like to give my customers that choice and it's worked for me so far. And a quick tip about payment, I think it's always good to insist on payment upfront before you begin anything. And the reason for that is because you really want to make sure that the wholesale customer that's inquiring about your products are actually serious about purchasing. You don't want to put in all the time and effort behind a wholesale order only for that customer to back out. And if they pay up front, they are way more likely to go through with a whole order so that your time and effort isn't wasted. And product too, if it's a custom order. Definitely insist on full payment, or partial payment in the form of a deposit upfront before you begin any work. And if you're doing all of this by yourself, you have so little time and you don't wanna be spending your precious, precious time chasing after people for money. I hate it, I don't like doing that. I just don't wanna deal with it whatsoever. So get payment upfront and, and if they don't wanna do that, then they're probably not worth taking on as a wholesale customer. So now that you have your wholesale price sheet, you know how you wanna get paid, you have all of that figured out, now you're able to send back a professional email response to that inquiry. To help streamline your business, it's always a great idea to maybe make a template that you send to each wholesale inquiry to help save time because essentially you wanna have all of that information be the same so that you're not confusing yourself or your customers and you also come off as really professional when you know your process. So in my email, I like to thank them for their interest in our products. I like to include the wholesale price sheet and I like to note down some very important things that they need to consider if they want to move forward with us as a company that they are buying wholesale products from. And that information includes things like the fact that I want them to pay for shipping, the entire cost of shipping before I release their package. I also list out how and when I expect to get payment. I like to put all of that information up front so that if they're the type of wholesale customer that doesn't like that or they're uneasy about that, then they can easily step away before I put in all the effort into building an invoice for them and potentially wasting time. So after I send all of that off to them, I just wait for the response. Three things may happen from that. They might ghost us. If that's the case, then okay. I guess they don't like our terms. They don't like our prices. That's fine. They might respond and say, oh, thank you, but I don't think this is a good fit. Or the third outcome, which is the best outcome, they'll come back and say, this sounds great. And they will list out exactly what they want. At that point, what I will do is I will build out an invoice for them and send it to them so that they can see exactly what they've ordered with a final total price. And if they agree to that, they will send me payment in full. And at that point, I will begin production. So once everything is ready, all their products have been made and we're ready to get this order out the door, now we have to worry about shipping. And I mentioned earlier before on how I as a company insist on customer paying for shipment in full. And the reason is because these are huge orders, big orders, and sometimes they're going to places far away. So, so as owners of e-commerce businesses, you guys know how expensive shipping is when it's a small box. Imagine that box is huge and heavy. Because the wholesale customer is getting such a huge discount already, I really don't want to continue to lose more money by, by taking on those shipping costs. So what I'll do is we will build out the package, everything all wrapped and put it into the box, We'll weigh it, we'll measure out the dimensions, and then we'll either go to Snapship or eShipper, plug in all the numbers and get a quote from those platforms to see how much exactly it will cost. Then I will take that number and communicate that to the wholesale customer and just let them know that their order is ready. This is how much you'll need to pay to ship it. And we will ship it out and release their package once that payment for shipment is received. Now, when it comes to actually shipping your wholesale order, you really, really want to use good quality shipping materials. And that includes really tough corrugated boxes. It includes bubble wrap, lots of secure wrapping. Anticipate that the package is gonna be handled roughly and prepare for that accordingly. It sucks so much to put all that time and effort into building out a wholesale order only for it to arrive at the other end with goods damaged, with things broken. It's just an awful experience for both you and your wholesale customer. So try your best while the power is still in your hands to prevent that as much as possible. So that is my whole process from beginning to end. And if I have not scared you off about doing wholesale orders yet, here are some tips. 
Remember, the wholesale process is a long process. Yes, there is big money involved, but there is also big time and effort involved with that as well. With that in mind, you want to make sure you're absolutely ready as a company to be able to handle these types of orders. And one way to know whether or not you're ready is if you are actually getting inquiries to your company. If you find yourself wanting to look for these wholesale customers and going into Facebook groups and asking, how do I get wholesale customers? That's probably an indication that you're not ready yet. All of my wholesale customers have found us online, Facebook, Etsy, on my website, on social media. Companies are looking all the time for companies like yours to be able to buy your products so one way to make your company attractive to these types of customers is to build the most professional and best brand you can possibly make. And really, you want to be in a position where you're used to fulfilling online orders. You're used to the ebb and flow of getting orders out and ordering more materials, understanding inventory. You want to be familiar with that whole process because a wholesale order can really throw a wrench in everything. By the time my wholesale customers have found me, I had already been doing a few in-person farmer's markets and I was already getting a few orders here and there online. So I was already familiar with, with the process of building out an order and shipping it to a customer online. So all of this is to say that the wholesale company will find you when the time is right. And in the meantime, you really wanna be developing your brand, making sure that your product is the best that it can be, that you are positioning yourself in a way that you're able to get a large volume of products out the door if need be, that your supplies are enough so that when a wholesale order comes, you're able to make that without jeopardizing the supply for your retail customers. Keep posting on social media, keep putting yourself in as many online platforms as possible so that the wholesale customers can find you. Just keep doing that and naturally, these wholesale customers will find you, I promise. And by the time you get that inquiry, you'll be primed and ready to respond with a professional email, you'll have your wholesale price sheet ready, and you'll have enough stock and supplies to be able to fill that order quickly and timely without scrambling. And you'll also come off as confident because you as a company know what your time and efforts are worth. And with that being said, one final tip is don't be afraid to say no to these wholesale customers. If it doesn't feel right, that's usually a red flag that it's not right. And one of the things that for me as a company doesn't feel right is when I present that initial email to an inquiry and they come back trying to haggle with me or they seem hesitant to my terms. Even if we eventually decide on something, that's usually an indication that they are going to be difficult down the road. Know your worth, be firm. A difficult wholesale customer is 100% not worth your time and stress and you already have enough to worry about believe me <laughs> so that is my video on wholesale customers i really hope you found that information helpful and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe <laughs> don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you know exactly when to post and you never miss out and for those who have already subscribed you already know how much I love you guys. You have been so supportive and so encouraging and really helpful in providing me feedback. So keep those comments coming and keep those video requests coming because they've really helped flesh out my content calendar and I cannot wait to show you guys what else I have in store. So keep smiling, keep being awesome, keep hustling and keep growing and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.